So, Miles, you're the one that's a father, correct? Yes. Tell me about your kids. Uh, I got three daughters, eight, five and a half, and nine months. Wait, God bless you with three girls? Of course, only the best. Okay, so eight? Five and a half and nine months. Nine months, oh wow, so you've got a newborn. Yeah, we started over for fun, see, Just bring it back to the you know, beginning stages again, keeps you young. What's that like for you to have to go back again in time and sense like it? Um, honestly, it's awesome. Kids are amazing. If, I don't, do you have kids? I do. I mean, if anyone who's had kids, they're incredible. I mean, some days you're like, oh my God, but then most of the days you're just like, everything's great. You know, when your kids smile and you walk in the door and they, you know, give you hugs and kisses, there's not really anything like it. You know, it's not There's also something really special with a daughter and a father relationship, you know, so. Yeah, they're daddy's girls for sure. Like when yeah. I come home, they're glued to me. It doesn't, they're like, where are we going? What are we doing? Where are you going? If I get up off the couch, like, dad, what are you doing? And they start like following me around the house. Uh -huh. and it's pretty funny. But See, I wouldn't trade it in for nothing. Right, and you're on tour a lot. So that's gotta be hard. So explain how like the balance with family, tour life, band life, all that fits in. Um, we kind of, we're blessed right now to be able to kind of dictate our own schedule a little bit. So we kind of set it up where we play four on and then we have three days off. So we'll have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. So pretty much every Monday I just fly home and see the kids. And, oh, that's perfect. And uh, you get basically like almost two days with them and, and you go back to, you know, your madness. So half the week you get to be a complete maniac and then the other half of the week you get to be like a regular uh, dad, you know. A kid. Yeah. A big grown yeah, adult. We go, we go right? surfing, go to the pool, we go to the park, ride bikes, whatever. So having three of them, I only have one, is it true that each one of them can have a completely different personality even like Oh the same yeah, household, they're, com like they're, they're completely different, all, all three girls, but uh, I mean it's just kind of intense. There's a lot of, you know, three, three daughters, wife, girl, dog, two hands, I mean I need to get like some sort of uh, boy animal or something to hang out with. Yeah, <laughs> it's I'm gonna need to get him a, a big dog. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it's great, honestly. Like th their personalities are completely different. And what's funny is, the one that looks like me is like her mother, mm. and the one that looks like her mother is like me. So it's really, it's, it's it's awesome. You never know what you know you're gonna get with the kids. So it's cool. You and Kyle started off in high school, so just like a year or two ago. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a few. I wish it was only a few years ago, but yeah. <laughs> what inspired you to get into music? Um, well, first of all, we've known each other since uh, we were one and two years old. We, we lived across the street from each other. So I thought Kyle was messing with me when he said that, but that's a true story. Yeah, one yeah. One and two. Yeah, our parents were friends, and so basically since diapers, you know what I mean, we've known each other. And uh, I mean, it's just kind of been a blessing, you know, we've been able to be in this band forever. It's, it's, we've been in this band for more than half our life, which is crazy. You know what I mean? Not many people can say that stuff. And just the fact that like, you know, you're doing it with basically, it's like your family, you know, brothers from other mothers. So it's it's like, you get to do all this stuff together, see the world, play music for like awesome fans everywhere. And, and, uh, and we all have kids now too. So it's like everyone's, you know, kids playing together. So it's just, everything's kind of a treat right now. You know, uh, don't really take it for granted just cause it's, it's, it's so special, you know. I mean, we have an awesome thing with the fans and, and the touring life, and then when you come home, you have a beautiful thing with, like your family. So, we talked about you guys going on tour and, and different um, locations. Like, do you have a favorite location? I mean, besides Seattle, of course, <laughs> obviously, obviously. But do you have a favorite location? Like, every time you go, it's just like there's just amazing energy there. You're so excited to be back. Um, honestly, like. In the summertime, it's it's hard to not say all those places aren't yeah. great because the vibes, everyone, you know, they really elevate to this different level when it's summertime. Because a lot of these areas, um, the weather is crap for eight months out of the year. So when they get that four month stretch of summer, they really go nuts. Mm -hmm. And the shows are, you know, you can feel the energy at the yeah. shows. and. Sometimes I feel like some people on the West Coast, like in Cali and stuff, they're a little spoiled with good weather year round. Like I dress like this all year, like it doesn't really matter. Christmas time, it's 70 degrees at the beach. And uh, so you don't, you know, if we get a splash of rain, like sometimes like a show would just be empty in California, mm -hmm. you know, just because like, oh my God, I'm getting wet. <laughs> There's Jesus. a drop. There's a drop. Gosh, <laughs> I think I saw a drop. <laughs> but it's just different. It's a, it's a kind of a, it is. you know, there's different parts of the country that 
have their own bits of awesomeness. You know what I mean? Everybody's kind of different. You know, Red Rocks is always a special place to play, but um, overall, I'm, I'm kind of happy playing everywhere. What do you like about Seattle? You guys have been here before. Um, I love the food, just the scenery. I love how lush it is when you leave the city. Yeah. Like everything, you know. For me, I, I don't know if I, it rains a lot up here too, so I don't know if I can do that full time, but it's definitely like a great place to visit. And for us, like, you know, the people are cool. We love the city, you know. We, um, we love going to that little, uh, what's that market on the water? Pike Place. Pike Place, yeah. yeah it's beautiful. Um, when we used to uh, play the show box right there, we would always just yeah. go down there. And, and uh, also after the show box, they have this little vendor with these cream cheese, uh, yeah. like sausage dogs. Street or whatever they meat. Are. Street meats. They're, yes. really, they're really good. So, so good. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. Those are some amazing things definitely about Seattle. And yeah, I love how you said the people too, because the people here are so friendly. TV interviewers are like on point. <laughs> <laughs> so they say. Oh. So they, mm. You guys are supporter of supporters of um, cannabis. So, is there any type of like things that you've noticed that were, have been different since it's legalized? Anything that's helped with your guys' music or um, any changes there? It it hasn't affected us mm -hmm. really because I've always just gone to the local grower. Mm -hmm. We never needed it to be legal to do that. So, I mean, I'm happy that it's reached certain levels in the legal in the legal side of it, but it's still got a long way to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if they're smart on the overall, like on the federal level, because obviously the states are going to do what they want to do, but the federal level, they can still step in anytime they want until it's actually written out that they can't step in. Yeah. You know, so that's the one thing, you know, when you, you got to get guys out like the Jeff Sessions of the world, like that kind of thinking is dead. Like that's, it's stupid. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Like that old way, like you, it's time for new blood just to, to run the wave of, of politics and in, in the, in the states in general, like it's just not really fair. They don't really have, you know, a view on life of someone that's making forty grand a year, raising two kids, and and this guy's, you know, got a hundred million dollars, saying, "Let me tell you what it's like to be a right. middle class American." It's like, what the hell do you know? Right. Dude, you know. Yeah. So I think once you get like that completely taken care of, it will only be better for the, the states in general. Like back in the day, like Ben Franklin used to say how hemp would be the most profitable thing for the mm -hmm. for the US because of what you can make with it in so many different levels. So I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, we've taken so many big steps. I think it's only gonna keep snowballing. I mean, they're gonna try to put up fences, but you know, all you can do is just, you know, keep riding the wave and, and hope for the best. I think your predictions are right on. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Rumor has it that you guys have a lot of involvement and you support charit charitable causes. Is there any that you can tell us about or ones that are just like really near and dear to your heart? Well, we do a lot of stuff for like the childhood cancer kids and stuff yeah. just because it's, you know, unfortunately, you know, so many young kids, their lives are taken away before they even have a chance to put their imprint on life. You know what I mean? So as parents, it's just something that's been, you know, close to our hearts and we've had friends that have lost kids and you know it's something that we always try to support and it's kind of funny like you'll do a post on on the Facebook or like the Instagram <laughs> whatever you want to call yeah. this you know and you'll do some silly posts and you'll get like 20,000 views and you'll be like hey I need to help these kids with and cancer then, and you'll yeah. get like 300 views like oh and like all of a sudden right? it's like crickets and shit you know, so. why is that shouldn't it be the opposite I don't that has always blown my mind yeah it's it's a funny thing but you know for us is Anytime we can help out, like we try to do a couple of those charity events a year and we do like the golf tournaments and stuff with those. Our friends with Saquon in San Diego help a lot with that too, so. I, I think that's amazing that you guys do that and thank you um, for posting those that might not be as popular, but in reality, those are the ones that mean the most. Of course, of course. I mean, it's important because it's somebody's child, you know right? what I mean? And, and, and the child itself, like they want to live a long life, you know, yeah. they don't. And what's crazy is they're actually, when you see them, like they are, they have so much strength mm -hmm. from fighting so hard. Like they're they're way stronger than you are, even mentally. Because as an adult, sometimes you're not as strong as you think you are when you see something like that. And what the families have to go through, it's like we just you know we salute them and just try to bring awareness to it. 
How would you describe your music to someone who has never heard it before? Because it's very organic, it's very different, it's very unique. So what kind of categories would you really kind of fit it into? Um, I think it's kind of hard to categorize the band right? just because we play everything. I always kind of like to say it's a melting pot of madness because mm -hmm. it's a little bit of so many different styles of music within reggae, blues, hip hop, acoustic music, punk, metal, ska, funk, like it doesn't really matter. Um, and that's what keeps it fun for us. I mean, I think if you're gonna go to a slightly stupid show, I don't care what style of music you like, there's gonna be something in there where you be like, oh, cool, like that's my style right yeah. there. Like that's my style. And just the vibe, like we, you know, you can see that we're having a good time and we're not, I mean, this is what you see is what you get. Like we don't like, you know, we're just beach kids that are blessed to play music and travel with your friends and and uh, do what we do. I mean, we've been doing it for 20, 20 years and it's crazy, you know? Well, you just kind of pinch yourself. Right? Might as well. <laughs> or others can pinch you. <laughs> <laughs> we are really excited to have you guys back here in Seattle and it means a lot to us. And so thank you for all the voices that couldn't be here to thank you in person. Oh, I get the privilege really, to thank you. We, we love coming here. We appreciate thanks. it. And also, thanks for all this. It's I've cool. got um, something that is specially made just for you, Ooh. no one has the same ingredients in this bag this is that you only. get. This is from reform.rocks and refer, so they made this for you. So I'd Sweet. like to give this to you and thank you from um, the rest of our city for being here and supporting Seattle. Oh yeah, thanks so much. I hope you guys come back and- um, Oh, I, this is a staple. This is summertime, like there's no better place to be, especially this time of year. One thing I want to tell you about recently listening to your guys' music, that I wanted to share with you is that when I listened to it, it made me feel happy. That was what awesome. I got out of it. Like I, <laughs> I would listen to it and it just, it's like hard not to just like, want to like move your body a little bit, smile and feel like a positive energy. So there's something about your music that brings off that vibe. So that's really cool. So I'm really excited to see you guys live tonight. Oh yeah, so, yeah. that's awesome. I appreciate that.